Hello and welcome to the Monday, May 1st, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start with diaries from this weekend. We got one on Friday from Xavier about doing a quick indicator of compromise scan using Docker. The tool that Xavier actually uses here is Locky. It's a free version of the Tor scanner. While Locky is usually just installed on a Windows system, it's a Python script, so you don't really need Windows for it. And Xavier walks you through the process of setting up the Docker container with Locky and then doing a scan with it. And in the second diary over the weekend, we had uh, Didi write about how to deobfuscate scripts. In this particular case, JavaScript that was uh, using UTF-16 encoding. In this case, the trick was really just to remove the sort of non-ASCII, the non-translatable uh, characters. And Didi walks you through how to do this and how he then figured out what kind of malware it is and also what it used for its particular command and control server. And if you are using an email address that is provided to you by AT&T or one of its uh, other companies like spcglobal.net and such are other domains that may be affected by this. Well, uh, your email account may have been compromised due to a bug in AT&T's email system. The root cause here was that attackers were able to set up special authentication keys for any user without properly authenticating. You may have run through a procedure like this yourself where you do have an email account that requires two-factor authentication and in order to allow a legacy email client to connect to this email account, you can create sort of a unique random key that is then being used as more traditional password to connect to your email account instead of having to provide a two-factor token, which of course isn't really all that convenient if your email client is constantly polling your email. The goal behind this attack appeared to have been users of uh, cryptocurrencies and apparently around $20 million in cryptocurrency was stolen here by then using the email access in order to reset passwords or authenticate to the various coin trading systems. AT&T now, of course, has fixed uh, the underlying issue with the creation of these secure email keys, and they also did request some users that they believe were affected to reset their passwords. And talking about stolen cryptocurrency, there is also some new malware out there called Atomic that's being sold on Telegram and that is being used to steal crypto coin related secrets from Mac users. Now, the victim has to w willingly install the malware, so some kind of Ruse social engineering has to be used in order to convince uh, the victim to install it. Once installed, the malware will pop up a fake uh, system dialog box. And it's pretty obvious, like if you know what they're supposed to look like, that this is a, not a normal sort of password dialog. But uh, the victim is then being asked to enter their password, which is then being used by the malware to gain access to items like, for example, the keychain and such, which then is used to exfiltrate passwords of uh, coin trading sites. There's also code in this malware to look for wallets and the like. So anything uh, crypto coin related is being stolen here from the victim. And Psychcell did release updates for its firewalls, uh, updates that you definitely do want to apply quickly. There are at least two vulnerabilities being addressed here. One, a remote code execution vulnerability with a CVSS score of 9.8. Eight. Kind of interesting, it says that uh, due to improper error message handling, there is this OS command injection, or as they call it, OS command uh, 
execution uh, vulnerability. So not even sure what this would refer to, but definitely something I do want to patch. It does not require authentication. There's also a second uh, code execution vulnerability being patched here, but that second vulnerability does require authentication. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.